Hey, what's up, you guys? AS Jets coming to you with another model aircraft review. Today I'll be doing the Gemini Jets 1400 scale American Airlines Boeing 777 300ER. This is the most recent release, I believe. They released this back in December 2019. Um, so yeah, fairly new. It's got the new mold and everything. Um, yeah, I'll try to make this review pretty short, so let's get right into it. We'll start with the box. Pretty generic Gemini box, nothing much to talk about. We got the logo here, the slogan, the CGI image right here, the Boeing 777 300ER writing, American Airlines logo, uh, the sides, which are, of course, this, you know, nothing too notable. Here's the back, and then 2019 release, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, onto the flap, sorry about that. Some information on the Boeing 777 here. And then down here is some information on this particular airframe. And this aircraft is November 735 Alpha Tango. This is the exact same plane which I flew from Dallas, Hong Kong. And if you haven't seen the previous video, which is the takeoff on board this exact plane, go check that out. It was an epic takeoff, dude. I swear. Like, it was uh, pretty foggy conditions, you know, cloudy, overcast, somewhat rainy. And the, t the takeoff from Dallas on this plane was absolutely magnificent, fantastic. It was spectacular. It was hands down one of the coolest takeoffs I've ever experienced, and uh, the fact that it was on board this plane, a 777-300ER, was even cooler. So be sure to check that video out. I'll be sure to upload the landing video soon, or maybe I've already uploaded it. I'm not too sure when I'm uploading this video, but yeah, go ahead and check that out, please, if you'll be so kind. So let's get started with the review. Uh, this is a new Gemini 777 mold. Well, it's not too new anymore. It's been around for like four years, but... Um, this mold is pretty good. The only thing that I feel like is a bit off might be the, the nose gear height, or maybe the gear in general. I feel like they're a bit too tall, but that might just be me. I have no idea. But it's a good mold, nonetheless. Um, so let's get started with the, 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 the cockpit section. You got the nose, not the nose, the cockpit windows here. Windshield wipers, radome. It's a little hard to see those details, like the nose cone, you can't really see it. And the pitot tubes down there, kind of hard to see. You got the nose gear, f nose gear door with 77-3, the fleet number which is 7LV, and then ETOPS back here. The nose gear, which the landing gear roll by the way. Um, well some of them do, it's like with Gemini Jets, they make rolling landing gear, but only like two of the actual tires roll, if you know what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, pretty good detailing on the nose gear strut, as you can see it looks like it's got lights there, but of course they don't actually work. Um, here's the L1 and L2 doors. Got the One World logo there, the American Airlines new titles I guess. Got an antenna here. And this is this really made me a bit, um, this kind of ticked me off a little bit. The fact that Gemini put the uh, SATCOM on like the box there, like it shows the model having the SATCOM dish there. The model doesn't even have it. It's just got it painted on there as you can see. So that was pretty unfortunate. I was really looking forward to the model having the actual 3D, you know, dish there, but Gemini just disappointed us there. Um, so yeah, anyway, moving on, you got the GE9115B engines with uh, fan blades, nicely done, um, which don't spin, sadly. Got the inboard landing light here. Uh, overwing exit here because it's a 777 300ER. Uh, the wings, not much to show, but they're pretty good. You got the aggress aero markings, the control surfaces like the flaps and everything, and of course the raked wing tips, which is um, you know part of the 777 300ER and 200LR you know wings. You got the L4 door here, and then L5 the aft door back here. Uh, two more antennas back uh, here. And it's good that they made them two, you know, different sizes because that's how it is in real life. They're not the same size. They are two. This one's a bit smaller than that one is in real life. So, good job there. Um, the tail, of course, and then the APU tail cone, horizontal stabilizers, and then the registration, the American flag, and then the fleet number again. So, yeah. Uh, and on to the other side, which, as I say every single time, which is basically the same. You just got the cargo doors, which are kind of hard to see because of the, the livery and everything, but there's the one in the front and then the two in the back right here. Um, and the top, I didn't, I didn't really 
show the top in much detail, but you just got some lights there, painted on. Um, so yeah, and then onto the underbelly, which again is pretty bland, which I was surprised to see how how uh, less detail there is down here, um, considering it's like 2019 and a bunch of model companies have been putting lots of detail on their models, especially in the underbelly, so I was a bit surprised to see that there's not much down here. Um, but there's the nose gear doors there, Gemini logo, the beacon light, stand hole, sadly no landing gear doors marked on here, um, but there's the actual gear. They don't really pip, kind of, not really, uh, and they don't roll either, which they're supposed to, oh this one does, this front tire does. Um, they're supposed to roll, but they don't, and I suppose it's a good thing that they don't roll, because for me, in past experiences, the models with rolling landing gear, those are the models that tend to break. Um, you know, the gears that tend to break earliest are the the ones that roll. That's just my experience that I've had. Um, there's the R uh, RAT, the Ram Air Turbine right there, which is that little rectangle. And that's, yeah, that's basically it. So, when I flew this plane, I was actually seated on this side, right side, in seat 27L. It was one of these windows right here. So I had a brilliant view of the wing. Of course, if you haven't checked out the takeoff video, go check it out. You'll be able to see for yourself how amazing the takeoff and the you know the view was spectacular. So um, I hung out a little bit by the L4 door. It was pretty cool. I walked around. Um, it was a great flight. Um, even though American, the economy class isn't too great. Um, and I have a trip report on this as well if you want to check it out. It was a pretty nice report, one of my favorite ones that I've ever made. So please check it out as well on my main channel. If you've got the time, of course, it's like 21 minutes long. Um, but yeah, I haven't done a, I've got a, quite a few American models, but I don't do many reviews on them for some reason. I tend to get my sort of international carrier models done first before I move on to the U.S. Um, but yeah, I've got quite a, I've got like four other American wide bodies, uh, three triple set, three other triple sevens, one seven eight seven. I've done the seven eight seven already, but um, the I don't think I've done the the three other triple sevens. So maybe in the future you'll see those. Um, they're older models, of course. Um, the next review I'm probably gonna make it this one, the Cutter A three fifty one thousand by Aviation four hundred. This one's a masterpiece. Um, and I will, you will find out why, but that is a nice model and that'll probably be the next review. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. We're getting all the more closer to 1000, which is great. If we can hit that by August, that would be amazing. So thank you <clears throat> again for your continued support. Sorry, I'm filming this like literally maybe like 10 minutes after I woke up. So that's why I sound a bit weird, but, um, it's just part of the grind. You know what I mean? But yeah, thank you again for tuning in. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I will check back with you in the next one. Goodbye.